Could the universe have been created from light? I will demonstrate via this video that there was a moment of creation and the universe, including us, could have conceivably been created from light. Assertion. The creator created the entire universe energy matter with light and light alone. Proof. Light can create matter. When two photons, what light is made of, collide, they create matter. The equation for this reaction is provided right here. So, photon collides into a photon, produces an electron and a positron. Electron is matter, positron is antimatter. The required temperature of the light required for this to occur is provided in this table here. For example, to create an electron requires photons at a temperature of 5.9 thousand million degrees. The required temperature of light to produce a proton is 10,888 thousand million degrees. You can actually solve for it with these equations right here. You set the energy of a light photon, kT, is equal to the rest energy of matter, which is the mass of the matter times the speed of light squared and solve for temperature. So if you plug in the mass of an electron right here and solve for temperature, you get this number here, 5.9 thousand million degrees. And now, physicists at Brookhaven National Laboratory believe that they've beaten their contemporaries to the punch, and that they have achieved the first direct evidence of matter created from light. At the center of the Brookhaven experiment are heavy ions of gold, meaning particles of gold that have been stripped of their electrons to create a powerful positive charge. In the experiment, the full details of which were made public in July 2021, the charged ions were accelerated to 99.995% the speed of light inside the relativistic heavy ion collider. An offshoot of this process was that what's been labeled a cloud of photons appeared around the gold ions. And so when the ions passed close enough by one another, those extreme high energy photons did collide. The collisions themselves weren't actually detectable, but the resulting generation of electrons and positrons, the resulting creation of matter, was. And therefore, the claim is that the Breitwheeler process has finally been demonstrated. Okay, so light can create us, but how do we know it was light that created us? Answer, because we have physical evidence that light was around shortly after the Big Bang. Much of the light from the moment of creation which started the universe went into the creation of matter, stars, galaxies, and us. But after such time as all the matter was created, there was an excess of this light above that of matter. They called this light the CMB, cosmic microwave background. The remnants of this light is all around us. In fact, you can see it on an old antenna cathode ray to TV set. And it was discovered by radio astronomers Penzias and Wilson in the 60s by accident. TV static holds a clue. 1% of the static on this screen comes from light from the Big Bang. In 1964, astronomers Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson were listening to radio signals from space. But in every direction, they were picking up a background hum. Puzzled by the hum, they suspected they knew the culprit and swept the entire receiver free of pigeon droppings, but to no avail. What Penzias and Wilson had stumbled upon was the afterglow of the fireball created by the Big Bang. Back when light started its journey shortly after the Big Bang, it was visible light, like our sun is today, and at such time its temperature was about 3000 Kelvin, which corresponds to a wavelength of 0 0.000002 meters. We reason that it was this temperature of 3,000 degrees because at higher temperatures, uh, we know from experiments that electrons would have been outside of the atoms and would simply block the light from moving outwards. So the universe became transparent to light at the temperature of about 3,000 degrees Kelvin. Today, we observe much cooler light as the light stretched with the expansion of the universe. It cooled to about 3 degrees Kelvin, and this is in the microwave range of wavelengths of about 0 0.002 meters. We cannot see it, but we have sensors that can detect it.
So this image demonstrates the temperatures of the sky from the exoslide of the creation, the CMB. So over here, imagine a sphere, okay, with Earth inside. This is Earth. So as the CMB waves are coming to us from all different parts of the universe, imagine those waves touching this spherical sensor, which is picking up the temperature of those waves. Now flatten that sphere out, and you've got this image here. So this image is, in effect, a baby picture of the universe, showing the temperature of the photons, which left the moment of creation about 13 billion years ago. All the temperatures are about 2.7 Kelvin. The various colors represent hotter or colder than 2.7 Kelvin. But since the difference is less than 0 0.0001, a relative hot spot, say red here, uh, might be 2.7003 Kelvin, and a relative cold spot, the blue marks here, uh, might be 2.699 Kelvin. So to a high degree of accuracy, all light coming to Earth uh, is coming from the same source. And we think it's the light from the Big Bang. The CMB is light from the moment of creation. So here's some additional proof. The excess CMB light was necessary to explain the amount of hydrogen and helium we observe in the visible universe today, which is about 74% hydrogen and 24% helium. This idea was actually proposed decades before the CMB was actually discovered. So here's the argument. Continue to rewind the universe creation timeline. The further we go back into time, the smaller the universe. Imagine an explosion of anything and imagine concentric spheres containing the explosion. The spheres grow with time, right? So initially the Big Bang was probably the size of less, less than a marble, right? But with time, the sphere containing explosion actually grew. The relationship between temperature and the size of the universe is actually an inverse one. So the smaller the dimensions of the universe, the greater the temperature. And as this R approaches uh, for really small numbers, this approaches hundreds of millions of degrees. So if you rewind time, the further you go back into time, the hotter the universe. Go back far enough and you end up with temperatures of radiation hot enough to create matter. From theory and experiments, we know the temperature at which protons and neutrons could combine to create stable hydrogen and helium. This temperature is 3,000 million degrees Kelvin. If temperatures higher than this, our laws of physics break down. Physicists do not know what came first for sure, matter slash antimatter or light, but light makes more sense. However, with massive amount of excess CMB light present, more complex nuclei could not form, since the high energy CMB light would crash into more complex, less stable nuclei, knocking it apart. Had the excess CMB light not been around, then hydrogen would have been cooked into higher elements, and there would have been insufficient hydrogen to provide for the construction of the universe and us. As the universe expanded and cooled, eventually the CMB photon's energy dropped to below that which is required to knock an electron out of a hydrogen or helium atom, which is an energy of 13.8 electron volts, which corresponds to a temperature of the radiation, the CMB radiation, of 3,000 degrees Kelvin. At such temperature, since the electrons had bound to the atoms of hydrogen and helium, the universe became transparent, and the light photons were finally able to move outwards with the universe expansion. The CMB is light from the moment of creation, so here is even more proof. If the previous lights were not enough, the excess light, CMB, we observe from the moment of creation fits a very special curve perfectly. It's this curve right here. It's called a black body radiation curve. Physicists have proven, and it is rather complex, that the CMB came from an early universe, which at stages was in thermal equilibrium, given rise to this black body curve. Such special light fits a curve like that below. As you can see, the measured CMB intensity, which is the red line here, fits a theoretical black body curve almost perfectly. Okay, the blue line would be a theoretical uh, 
black body curve 